Ukraine has received 10 F-16 fighters from Western countries. And by the end of the year, their number will increase to 20. That's what is expected. Now, Kiev hopes that the new fighter jets will help beat Russian forces, or at least push them back, allowing them to regain air dominance on the war front. This is what Ukraine expects. What's Ukraine's F-16 game plan? Can they get past Russia's formidable air defense systems? Welcome to Game Plan. I'm Shivan Janna. To discuss this further, we're being joined by Dr. Gilbert Doctorow, international affairs analyst, author, and historian. Joining us from Brussels, Dr. Doctorow, always a pleasure speaking with you. Do you feel F-16s will make a difference in the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war? No, and it's not my personal opinion. I think there's a consensus of expert opinion that the effect uh, on Ukraine's uh, defense and, and uh, attack possibilities from the acquisition of these several F-16s will be nil. The, I can get into why that is so in a moment, but I'd like to look at the bigger issue. That is, what is NATO doing in and through Ukraine? And here I make reference to a well-known Swiss uh, military expert, Jacques Baud, who has from the beginning uh, uh, held the opinion that the NATO approach to Ukraine is to use the country as a battering ram against Russia. And the NATO from the very beginning of this conflict, going back to February 2022, was never interested in Ukraine winning the battle and freeing its territory. Its only interest was in causing maximal damage to Russia, hopefully inflicting a humiliating defeat in one way or another on Russia, and thereby precipitating a regime change in Moscow and the eventual breakup of the Russian Federation. This is what he has said, and I subscribe fully to that as the overarching explanation of what has been going on. If Ukraine is battered, if Ukraine suffers enormous uh, human and material losses, as has been the case, that is of no concern to its backers uh, or nominal backers in the United States and NATO. So the acquisition of these F-16s is put in this overall um, context of always too little too late always under-equipped because the victory of Ukraine is not what is, is the objective. The drawing out the conflict, bleeding Russia, hopefully uh, bringing Russia into a swamp of, 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 of long-term war warfare with Ukraine that distracts Russia uh, from the other geopolitical challenges that it faces across the globe. Dr. Dr. Rowe, now, as far as the larger vision behind this Russia-Ukraine war is concerned, from the from NATO side or from the West side, of course, there are varying opinions. If you ask someone from the West or rather from the US or who understands or backs NATO's understanding, they will perhaps say that they are trying to uh, keep Russia from invading and rather they want to get Russia out of Ukraine. And that's why they're arming Ukraine with the F-16s. But... Ukraine, from its perspective, will be using the F-16s to the best that they can. Do you feel Ukraine will have to destroy Russian air defenses to make the F-16s effective? And when I say Russian air defenses, can they get past the likes of Russia's S-300, S-400, S-500? They are formidable air defense systems. Well, I think you know the answer to that, and it's negative. Of course they can't. The, um, as, as I said, it's mission impossible for Ukraine. If these airplanes ever take off, it'll be a miracle. The Russians know very well the, which is the remaining uh, air bases on Ukrainian soil, where these can be based. Most, most people are pointing to the um, far west of Ukraine, the area close to the Romanian border. The Russians also can read the map, and they know very well uh, what bases they, have, they are left to attack to make it physically impossible for Ukrainians to fly these planes from their own territory. What does that mean? It means that they would be flying them from Romania or from Bulgaria or from Poland. And it invites uh, the conflict to escalate mm. to a direct, direct Russian NATO war. Um, however, I doubt that things will reach that critical impasse because the world has more than one hearth of conflict and, and, uh, and military confrontation. And it may well be overtaken by a regional war that be in the Middle East or the Western Asia that becomes uh, um, a, the new center of attention and of for military efforts 
for the United States and its allies, where, whereby Ukraine will fall to the, to the rear and, and have less support and less global media attention than it does right now. We'll see. But everything is going to play out in the immediate weeks before us. So what I am now prognosticating is not something for the distant future. It's something that we will all watch closely mm -hmm. in the days ahead. Dr. Doctor, now I just want to take from what you mentioned that Russia knows exactly where their air bases are. And Russia has been targeting these bases that may house the F-16s and has vowed to shoot them down. I wanted to understand from you, do you feel this is a preemptive measure by Russia to avoid any damage which F-16s may cause to the Russian forces if they are used and deployed and if they take off? Well, there, there are multiple um, objectives on the Russian side. One of them is, as you say, the other is to humiliate the United States and to demonstrate that Russian uh, hardware, including aircraft and, um, and uh, air defenses, are superior to anything that the United States is trying to sell abroad. I think that message already, at the present stage of the conflict, has been well established uh, among global uh, procurement officers for military equipment, including India's own. The, um, the uh, achievements of the Russian um, arms developers have been manifestly demonstrated, and the ability of Russia to adapt itself very quickly to the changing challenges on the battlefield with new equipment, with, with drones and other uh, devices, which were unknown to warfare two, three years ago. Um, Russia has demonstrated an ability to master these skills, to, to implement and produce in numbers equipment that meets these challenges. So uh, Russia in every way has outperformed what the Pentagon and its allies in Western Europe have assumed was the case for Russia. So uh, if the, uh, on, the, on the level of, um, of global salesmanship of Russian military hardware, the, um, the experiments going on on Ukrainian territory, including what we are about to see as the likely destruction of F-16s on the ground, if not in the air, uh, is, is in Russia's, Russia's favor. As for changing the war, it is by, oh, by, oh, by general consensus of military experts, 10 airplanes, even 50 airplanes, will be meaningless in the ongoing conflict. The Russians have hundreds of planes, many of them uh, high performance, capable of shooting down the F-16s if there were to, ever to be a dogfight. But I don't think it'll get to that. But I think these planes will more likely be destroyed by strikes of Iskander or, if necessary, by hypersonic missile like Zircon um, um, or, uh, more likely, uh, Kinjal, uh, before they ever leave, leave the airport. Uh, the, I know very well that the United States and the Ukrainians are counting on the, um, the hardened nature of air bases that, that Ukraine inherited from its Soviet past. These were uh, unusually well defended and uh, with concrete bunkers, uh, concrete um, hangars for, um, for planes. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, Russia's firepower with these hypersonic missiles is capable of defeating any of the existing um, uh, air, air bases in Ukraine, not to mention the neighboring um, air bases in Romania or Moldova. Dr. Doctor, I, uh, you mentioned that you know it will be a miracle if these fighter jets even take off. Now, I understand that you don't think even, uh, you know, that for them, even flying within the country, even that is going to be a miracle. But as of now, it's still unclear what missiles the F-16s will be equipped with or what, what missiles are being sent to Ukraine to arm the F-16s with. More importantly, what range will they have? Do you feel Ukraine would use these F-16s to target inside Russia, even if, they're, if they take off and they're within Ukrainian airspace? I think that's the only interest that the Kiev authorities have in these planes, to talk about self-defense again, uh, or they're using them to destroy uh, Russian air defenses, is nonsensical. But uh, the Ukrainians are hoping to use these planes to deliver uh, long-range missiles, which, to, to the best of our knowledge, the United States has not yet authorized 
for equipping the, the F-16s. We'll see. Everything is always a bit lagging. Uh, the, the point about the, the destruction of these planes on the ground is we just have to remember what happened in the past week. It has not been uh, a subject of discussion in major media in the West, but there, there are uh, in, uh, in, the, um, in Russian media, there is discussion of the destruction, de destructive attack using um, uh, Kinjal missiles yeah. on, a, on a rebuilt and re revamped um, base west of Lvov, very close to Lvov, uh, that, was, uh, that was the host to numerous, uh, dozens if not hundreds, of NATO officers mm -hmm. um, engaged in training and guiding the Ukrainian um, armed forces. If this base can have been so uh, utterly destroyed, vaporizing, as they say, 200 or 300 officers, many of them senior NATO officials, then what is the chance of any F-16 based on anywhere in Ukrainian territory evading the, the revenge attacks of the Russians? I think nil. All right, uh, Dr. Gilbert, Doctor, thank you so much for sharing all your insights and sharing things that perhaps the regular public would not get to hear because majority of the narrative which goes out comes from the West, but this is a narrative which also needs to reach the ears of people who would be interested in matters and seeing where the Russia-Ukraine war is really heading. As of now, Ukraine has got 10 F-16s. They're expecting more by the end of the year and even more by next year. What kind of impact it will have on ground? As you mentioned earlier, we won't need to wait too long to see that actually play out. Thank you so much for joining in on Game Plan. Dr. Gilbert Doctorow, international affairs analyst, author and historian, joining us from Brussels. Always a pleasure speaking with you, sir. Thanks so much to you.